Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C Raptor, and today we're continuing our first look at the Italian destroyer line, this time as we move up to Tier 8's Vittorio Cuniberti. Hmm. I really want to like this ship, guys. I really want to like this ship, but I think she has a couple of glaring problems, right? Um, that it's not too late to fix, right? They're still in testing. They might yet, they might yet deal with this, but man, you know, Cuniberte is entering. There's a lot of tier eight destroyers. Like tier eight is a very, very busy tier. How many tier eight destroyers do we have now? Let me see. Uh, that survey says. Hmm, I gotta count it. Hold on. It uh, looks like about 24, 24 Tier 8 Destroyers. Kuniberti will be the 24th, apparently. And, um, yeah, this is a busy, busy, busy place. So we're going to talk about what she does well, what she doesn't do so well, and what I really think they're going to need to do to, for this ship to kind of excel or at least compete in this tier, in my opinion. Let's start at the top, like we always do, survivability. You see there, 16,700 HP. Now, this is not radically more than we saw... Uh, down at Tier 7 with Luca Tarigo, but it is better, and it is fairly competitive. The reason for that is that um, there's a lot of kind of Japanese gunboats in this tier. I'm looking at you, Asashio, and Yukikaze, for example, that have less HP than this, that are definitely vulnerable to getting run down, or at least, you know, if you blunder into one of these things, you are in trouble with his SAP. Um the, uh, the uh, European destroyers similarly uh, lack HP, in my mind, lack the HP to effectively deal with this, although, of course, Orcon does get the heal. Um, yeah, like, so 16,700 is kind of middle of the pack, but there are enough destroyers that are, enough tier 8 destroyers that have less HP than you that I think you're going to find, as long as you, you know, again, you pick and choose the right target, you're going to find yourself being very effective. Um, 19 millimeters of armor is... Um, Throughout there, and again, nothing to get excited about. You're going to take lots of full pins, and things are going to break and explode, and, you know, you're a destroyer. When you get shot at, things go sideways. Um, 39 knots, 650 on the turning circle, 3.9 on the rudder shift as we look at maneuverability and concealment. 39 knots is not best in tier. We're at a tier now where the French move up to Le Fantasque, right? So that's 43 knots, essentially. Um, and Kiev also exists over in the Russian branches. She's also nearly 43. But beyond that, 39 knots is really good. I'd say a typical tier 8 destroyer probably does 35 or 36 knots. So you've got an, a speed advantage going into this before your fancy speed boost. 650 on the turning circle is mm, average-ish. Average-ish. Some are better, some are worse. Um, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say she's going to handle pretty decently, especially with that 3.9 rudder shift. Again, there are a, a number of ships that are a little better than this, but also a number of ships that are worse than this. So she should handle pretty well for her speed and turning circle. Her concealment there you see listed as 8.2 on the surface. That's technically not quite correct. It is actually out to 8.42 now. That has been a little bit of a nerf. Um, and so full stealth rig here on Vittorio Cuniberti comes down to 6.62 kilometers. That's as low as you can get the stealth between um, between um, uh, concealment module, um, Concealment expert on the captain and camouflage. That is not worst in tier, only because Kiev exists. Every other destroyer, well, I guess technically Tarib, she outspots Tarib by three meters, Le Tarib, so yay. Every other tier eight destroyer is stealthier than you. Every single one. They're all going to see you coming. And again, I don't feel like, yeah, your health pool is nice, but do you really have the health pool to deal with that? I don't know, right? I don't. I'm not convinced. I feel like this is one we're going to have to really put through our paces. Now, I do like the turret arrangement, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I feel like the concealment, in my mind, needs a little bit of a buff. I'm not saying that she needs she needs to have Japanese torpedo boat concealment. We don't need to get this thing down to 5.4. That's crazy. But I think she should absolutely outspot the French, right? The French, the French destroyers have significantly more gun range, right? 12 and change in the case of Tarib, 13 flat in the case of Fantasque, and I'm looking at nine. So those guys have like four kilometers more gun range, and in the case of Fantasque, are actually stealthier than I am in Vittorio Cuniberti. That feels terrible. That feels terrible. I'm... And they're faster, right? Like, I don't know about this, guys. I don't know. What exactly is this ship supposed to do then? All right, anyway, enough enough about concealment. The concealment is not great, and honestly, in my mind, for what she is meant to do. 
The main battery, again, just like we saw down at tier seven, I've got three of these double barreled um, uh, twin, twin mounts here. Two forward, one aft. Now, this is a this is an improvement in terms of turret layout. I now have two turrets all the way forward of the superstructure, one all the way on the aft. If you remember Luca Torrigo, she had one forward, one amidships, and one aft. And even down at tier six, Avieri had that amidship single barrel turret. So now this 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 gives me a lot of firepower out my forward arc. I can get narrow to something and still have two thirds of my main battery to fire. That's kind of nice. That's, that's kind of nice. That main battery uh, goes out to nine kilometers, again, versus a 6.62 detection. So I've got a little more than two kilometers to play with here. Um, a four and a half second reload, that's a nice buff. That's a full second better than uh, Luca Trigo down at tier seven. So yes, we're, we're starting to see now um, a, a huge kind of upswing in the reload times, which I think is noteworthy. Um, it means that the deep, the, 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 the overall DPM of this ship if you just, again, raw numbers, no, not accounting for full pins, clocks in close to 230,000 DPM with the SAP. Um, realistically, that's down, you know, you're looking at a third of that. So what is that about? Uh, still almost 80,000 DPM, even if you're just landing full pins with all your SAP shells. Um, yeah, like if I'm an opposing destroyer, I don't want to deal with that, right? That guy can, again, like we said at tier seven, that guy can wipe me out in probably three to four salvos if I stumble into him in the wrong time. So yeah, I mean... Should be good at killing destroyers, like. But again, uh, she's gonna need teammates, right? The I think maybe we're starting to see one of the one of the kind of the running themes of the Italian Navy in general. If you remember the Italian cruisers, one of the one of the things that I never cared for them about them, one of one of the things that I still consider to be a huge weakness of those ships, they can't spot for themselves. No hydro, no radar, barely even airplanes, right? Yeah, you've got you've got spotter planes on some of those ships, but like that's not a really a great spotting tool anymore. They absolutely slap destroyers silly, but, right, spotting that destroyer is the struggle. And I feel like Cuniberte here is going to have the same problem, right? There are tier eight destroyers, and I'm not even talking about tier 10, because this thing's going to see tier 10 matchmaking, but there are tier eight destroyers that outspot this thing by over a kilometer, right? And she can only get up to her crazy, I'm going to run you down and murder you speed uh, with her speed boost for only 25 seconds. So... I don't know. Like I said last video, these ships feel very high skill floor to me. This is not a destroyer line for new players under any circumstances. Um, torpedoes. We do get a small buff here. Uh, the tier six and seven were both double barrel. I'm sorry, two two racks of triples on a 75 second reload or a 70 ish second reload um, on that 10,000 damage torpedo. Now Cuniberti here moves up to two racks of quadruple launchers, still with a 10,000 damage torpedo on a 56 knot speed, but now out to a 12 kilometer range. So this is gonna feel very similar to the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the meme torpedoes that the cruisers have, 12 kilometers, fairly slow, you just luck chuck them, right? You're going to dump these torpedoes into lanes where you expect to find enemy ships and hope they blunder into them because they move fairly slow and they're, 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 they are quote unquote, theoretically a little harder to spot than normal torp than quote unquote, normal torpedoes. And they do have a small, small reaction time buff versus most tier eight torpedoes. Most tier eight torpedoes, non-Japanese ones give the opponent about eight seconds of reaction time. I'd say that's pretty typical. Uh, um, Vittorio Cuniberti here, her torpedoes have probably about a seven and a half second reaction time. So, you know, you have a little less time to respond, but uh, again, uh, the torpedo armor is not, not anything to get excited about. Um, again, she has depth charges. Yay. We're not going to spend time with this because subs are still not really settled yet. Um, and like we've been saying again, now we're at tier eight, like we're at a tier now where you would start to expect seeing flak, maybe dual purpose batteries. Nope. None of that. Still looking at only a middle middle aura of 49 DPM and an inner aura of 84. This is actually worse AA than the tier 7 had. Luca Tarigo had more AA than this, believe it or not. More raw AA DPS than this. So, yeah. Um, the little 20 millimeter Bredas seem like really cool guns. I mean, look at all those barrels, right? Like, that should murderize planes, but it doesn't translate to a whole lot of damage for, for whatever reason. I, I don't know why. It just doesn't. I, I can't explain why the half inch guns do let do more damage than the three quarter inch guns that have more barrels. That doesn't feel right to me, but not my call. Um, quick tab over to look at consumables. 
Okay, so now for the first time at tier eight, you're going to see the consumables that all of the ships in the line starting down at tier two are going to have in the future. They don't have them right now in port. They have been announced. They will be getting these. So, of course, we have damage control party. We have our little exhaust smoke generator now working on 40 seconds. Some of the lower tier ones will probably be shorter than this. And then, of course, uh, emergency engine power there for 25 seconds. I get a 25 percent speed boost. So for 25 seconds, I'm probably, you know, chugging along at 50, 51 knots, maybe even a little higher with the speed flag on that kind of thing. And then a very long cooldown on that guy. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I still feel like Kuniberti here needs some balancing before she's ready for prime time. I still feel like Luca Trigo is worse. The four and a half second reload here is better, but that detection really hoses you in a tier where suddenly there's all kinds of ships that get proper, like sub six kilometer stealth and Kuniberti here is still chugging along at 6.6. .6. Like that feels awful. Just awful. We'll have to see if she comes through testing or if they make any more tweaks. Um, they haven't, they've declined to mess with her detection other than to nerf it so far. So clearly she's not going to get a, well, I'd say clearly. It seems unlikely that she'll get a detection buff, um, which is unfortunate because I think she could really use one given that this is a ship that's going to see tier 10 radar, tier 10 planes, tier 10 battleships, and she's going to be highly ineffective at doing much other than board control and murderizing other destroyers. I think the longer I look at these ships, the, the more I realize a player's worst nightmare is zoning into an Italian destroyer into a standard battle game. Think about that for a minute. In a, in a, in a domination game, this ship can contest caps because she is a bit of a cap bully certainly when she has a lot of health. So that's why, in my mind, you, you, you play slow early, you, you stop, you evaluate the board, you try to figure out where the opposing destroyers are likely to be or where they are, depending on the radar and your own team's spotting. Then you pick your target, you pick your point of pressure, you move in, you bully somebody out, you take a cap, and then you fight that, you fight for that cap tooth and nail, right? This is my cap, I'm going to defend it. Any destroyer that kind of tries to come in here will find themselves meeting the full capabilities of my SAP armament and get their faces melted off. But what happens in a standard battle, right? What happens in a standard battle where I have no caps to contest and every destroyer on the board outspots me and they don't have to close with me and I can't close with a cruiser or a battleship to be effective with my guns. I have to just kick back and and use my luck chuck torpedoes on a 90, excuse me, a 90 second cool, 90 second reload time and just hope somebody blunders into one because they're not that great. Hmm. I don't know. I have very mixed feelings about this line. It's certainly these, the seven and the eight, like the five and six, I feel like are really solid little ships for the tier. The seven, and the eight, I'm kind of down on guys. I'm kind of down on them. And uh, I really want to put these ships into the water and try them out to see if I'm full of crap or not. So maybe I'll try and do some of that in the next patch. But uh, you won't get to hear about that here. This is our first look, just raw numbers, checking the ship out, and uh, we're done. So anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.